Hello and welcome everyone. So I'll be explaining um, yeah, problem C of recent code forces round 725 div 3. Problem name number of pairs. Um, yeah, so basically this was a binary search uh, problem. I approached using binary search. And uh, let's see what, what the problem says, okay? So basically, uh, you're gonna be given a range of L to R where the smallest number could be 1 and the largest number could be up to 10 to the power 9 so and also you're also going to be given a, an array of n integers okay so what you have to find out is uh, the number of pairs i j okay where j should be greater than i okay j should be greater than i and the number of such pairs where if you add those values those pairs indices values it should be fit in between the ranges L from L to R inclusive okay so basically a i plus a j of any pair should be greater than or equal to L and less than or equal to R now if you could closely look at the constraints here n is up to two uh, 2 times 10 to the power 5 which is quite a big we could do we could do this uh, using brute force but that would definitely give us time limit exceeded because uh, n is up to 2 times 10 to the power 5 and our uh, limit test is up to 2 seconds so there so then we have only two options whether somehow we could make it uh, a big of n solution or we could come up with a big of n log n solution so I came up with an n log n solution using binary search so let's demonstrate how actually uh, the solution works okay now let's take one example here uh, we've got n equal to 5 L and R are respectively uh, from 5 till 8 so let's see where okay an array of five elements our l is five l is five and r is eight okay now what is the array given okay the five values are uh, are like five one two four three okay five one um five one two actually my bad okay five one two four and three okay five one two four three right okay so the answer for this test case is seven okay the answer for this test case is seven answer let's see the answer is seven now uh, if you could give a uh, and uh, basically there are some observations that we need to follow now look we are only caring about two integers for any separate pair we are only caring caring about two indices two different indices right now if I could somehow um, like uh, define this problem something like okay I will I will denote one integer as fixed okay and I will deal with the rest of the integers and I will add those values and I will see whether they're inside my range or not suppose I'm dealing with five if I'm dealing with five I will not deal with this in uh, this indices apart from that for the rest of the indices I will add those numbers with with the number itself that I denoted like five I will deal with all the possible indices and I will check whether if I do not it as a pair their sum is in between the range of L to R or not that's uh, what I I would do if I were to go for a, a brute force operations okay or I could check all the possible pairs and I will say that whichever uh, or what are the numbers that are in between my range but instead of thinking like that we have to think smartly 
Now, speaking of smartly, what I can, uh, what I, what I'm trying to say is, what if we think it from as a descending order point of view? You know, why I'm saying that is, is that if you sort the array, let's say, um, we actually, uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, just pick one element, any element. For, for now, just listen to me. Just pick one element, okay? And for the rest of the element, what you will do, or, or what you can do, is you, can, you could sort the rest of the values. That could be the first key observation. Okay. You, could, you are selecting one value, like here. If I, I'm selecting one value as five. And for the rest of the values, I'm gonna sort them. Now, if I sort them, I will know what is the minimum number which is in between this range. Similarly, what is the maximum number which is in between this range? Uh, maximum number or the minimum number finding what I mean by is, what is the minimum number such that if you add that number with this five, that, uh, that value is as minimal as possible and it is also inside my range from L to R. Similarly for uh, what is the maximum value that is inside uh, the rest of the values here and if you sum with my f uh, with this value 5 and it also uh, denotes as inside my range now we could do that for each and every value so for each and every value if I take this now let's say if I'm taking I'm taking 5 no uh, when I take 5 I could sort the rest of the values and uh, if I sort them then it becomes 1 2 3 and 4 and then easily I can say 1 2 3 and 4 let's say 1 2 and 3 and 4 okay for 5 I'm dealing with for 5 only now I know that if I do binary search I can easily find out that and I I can come with a conclusion that for 5 uh, the smallest number that it's gonna deal with such that it is uh, the sum of those two values is in between the range is nothing but 1 because 5 plus 1 is equal to 6 and 6 is between in between this L to R and what is the largest value that is in between the range not outside the range which is nothing but 3 because if you add 5 with 3, it becomes 8, which is in between the bound of L to R, from L to R. There you go. Now, for, for the value 5, you have found out that, okay, I have 3 pairs such that I could make some uh, good pairs like that, which are in between the range. Also, if you deal with 1, let's say the value 1. For the value 1, if I sort the rest of the values apart from 1, what it becomes for 1, okay, now I'm dealing with 1, what it becomes is 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, if you add 1 with 2, now if you, if you just do binary research, you will see that the smallest number that is, uh, uh, that is uh, inside the range from L to R is 4. If you add 4 with 1, it becomes 5, which is basically the smallest number. If you add it, it's inside the range what is the largest number that could come it's five so if one four one four so far we've got our pair one four and one five and five one right five one five two and five three so okay five one five two and five three now if you could clo have a closer look that we are actually adding multiple pairs now this is not applicable 5 1 5 2 and 5 3 1 5 is for this value we, we're getting 1 5 and we're also getting 5 1 but we are not allowed to do that right we're not allowed to do that we're not allowed to take the same pair again and again that's ex oh, so the the approach I hope you get that what I'm trying to say for each and every value apart from that apart from that that value for the rest of the value I'm gonna sort it and I'm gonna try to find out those two values that I, I was talking about but if you could do that in, in that way in that fashion you will see that some of the sub uh, some of the pairs 
uh, get overlapped. Now we don't want overlap pairs, right? We want the distinct pairs. Now to make sure the pairs are distinct, what we can do is we are gonna uh, we're gonna have to think a bit smartly here. We're gonna sort the initial array. Why I'm doing that? Why, why I'm saying that? Why I'm in, um, I'm gonna sort the initial array, and then what I'm what, what I will do after sorting the initial array, what I'm gonna be doing, let's say what was the array? One, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So after sorting, we're getting this. Now after sorting, we're doing the same thing, okay? But in a, in a different fashion, in a bit of smart fashion, which is we're gonna sort it, and we're gonna traverse the values from descending order, from the last to the fast. Now, why is this helping us? Traversing like that, doing the same thing, traversing like that. Why is that? Look, the last value will denote the maximum value. Now, if I know that, yeah, this is maximum. What I will only care about after that is only this part, okay? And I'm gonna make sure that no value comes from this part, right? So, my, I'm making sure that my pair is as distinct as possible, right? Now, after finishing the work of five, we're gonna do the same thing, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna do the binary search and do the same thing here for each and every integers, but from right to left by making sure this. Now, uh, let's say we're, we're gonna work with four now. If we're gonna work with four now, we don't have to work with five because we have already cleared out what are the possible pairs if we had taken five. So for, for the case of four, we're only taking care of four as my pairs one member and the, for the other members, I'm gonna deal with this rest of the values. I'm gonna deal binary search, two binary search I'm gonna apply for the two values that I've already mentioned and I'm gonna deal with those like that. For four, like I'm gonna deal with this this sort of members and I'm gonna um, uh, and I'm gonna do uh, do binary search and gonna find out the answer for if I denote my one of the pairs value is four. Similarly for three, I'm gonna deal with only these two. Similarly for two, I'm gonna deal with only one. That by allowing the same kind of work but in a different way like that is uh, making sure that we're only taking the distinct pairs. That's how we actually did that, did the problem. So if I take you to the code part, this is what we did. We're taking the array, taking the, oh my God. Uh, yeah, it's recording, okay. So yeah, we're taking the array, then sorting, and then after sorting, we're uh, looping from the from uh, till from from last uh, indexes va index value because we are making sure like uh, that our array moves like that. Okay, I hope you get that. Now for each and every part, this is the first binary oper binary search, and this is the second binary search. Both of these binary search are making sure that they are finding the smallest integer, uh, such that if you add it with the the other member, it's uh, inside the range. And the largest integer, um, if you just add it with uh, uh, the remaining member, uh, uh, such that it's uh, inside my range. And after that, we know that if we could found out uh, those two values, we know that the answer will definitely be like L minus R plus one, uh, or sorry, R minus L plus one, because R will denote like uh, the highest value that is making sure it's in inside the bound and the lowest value that is making sure inside the bound when we do the adding operations with the other member of my pair. I hope you get that here. This is the second binary search part. This is the first binary search part. Inside the binary search, I'm actually dealing with uh, the conditions and uh, making sure the mid goes in the right way, in the right direction. That's, that's how we did that. So I hope I made you understand that. Yeah, till next time, goodbye.